Well, to talk about the Japan-China relationship is, is very complex because it's a very complicated relationship. Uh, of course, there is competition. Uh, there is competition for uh, natural resources, there's competition for influence in Asia and elsewhere, there's commercial and industrial competition as there is between many countries. At the same time, uh, China and Japan, in different ways, are both crucial to each other's uh, economic development. Uh, and I haven't met any uh, major Japanese industrialist who isn't looking at China as a market for Japanese goods, uh, as a source of uh, equipment um, and materials uh, and components, um, or as a possible centre for investment. So every body in Japanese business, everybody in Japanese society, has a view uh, about uh, China and uh, this sense of uh, interdependence um, as well as uh, economic and perhaps political rivalry um, goes to the heart of that. And of course, um, in a number of areas in Japan, uh, there is a concern about China's long-term strategic uh, objectives and interests, which was reflected in the defense uh, white paper which was published a couple of years ago, in, in, which identified uh, China as a source of concern. So you have, I think, the ingredients there for a rather conflicted uh, view, um, which perhaps lies behind some of the uh, recent uh, problems in the uh, relationship. Well, uh, the area of cyber policy is a very, very interesting area, and one where we have been extremely active in the British government and the British Embassy in Tokyo over the last few couple of years. Uh, it's complicated because on the one hand uh, we want to ensure that uh, we are properly protected against cyber attacks. Uh, there is a security angle to all of this. At the same time uh, we want the uh, internet, we want cyberspace to be uh, a proper channel of disseminating information, education uh, and uh, ensuring that people can communicate and that those countries in the world that have a very different model of internet uh, management and control, a much more repressive model of control, uh, are not successful. We want uh, free communication, not, not uh, suppression of communication. Getting the balance right between these different uh, aspects of cyber policy is quite complex uh, and it's really a case of adopting a model which reflects the needs of the very wide range of stakeholders who have an interest in this. Uh, we find that the Japanese government thinks along very similar lines to the British government in this area and that is something we're very encouraged by uh, and indeed it's one of the successes I think uh, over the past 12 months uh, I felt um, that we have begun to develop a very constructive dialogue with the Japanese government uh, in this area. Well, the thinking behind Japan's embracing of free trade agreements, it's a mixture of uh, reflecting the fact that the World Trade Organization, Doha Round, has essentially uh, run into the sand somewhat, and it's also, uh, I think, a reflection of the concern at the centre of the Japanese government that more needs to be done more aggressively to deregulate the economy. Uh, this is what lies behind Prime Minister Noda's desire to make progress on the Trans-Pacific Partnership because he wants to tackle those areas of Japanese economic life which are vested interests and which are holding back the sort of economic reforms he wants to encourage. Uh, he's keen uh, to pursue uh, an agreement with the European Union and we in the British government are extremely keen that the EU should confirm later this month, November 2012, uh, a decision to open negotiations for a free trade agreement. Now, the reason that the Japanese government want to do this uh, is because the prize would be considerable in terms of two-way trade, but also because it is an opportunity to tackle those non-tariff barriers uh, which are holding back not just trade, but economic activity more generally. Um, we agree with them very strongly. Uh, we think this is a very high priority, and I very much hope that the EU will make early progress on this. Well, I think we're seeing uh, economic and business dynamism in a number of companies that are challenging the established uh, way of uh, operating, uh, both challenging their respective sectors but also challenging business organisations more generally. Um, companies like Rakuten, uh, the online retailer, companies uh, like uh, Lawson, uh, Uniqlo, um, computer game uh, companies, uh, uh, ICT, 
uh, innovative uh, companies uh, are uh, both challenging ways of doing business, often by adopting English as the language of the company, uh, and by encouraging a less traditional, less institutionally high-bound, more flexible, more fluid uh, way of managing themselves. Uh, and also, of course, uh, using uh, uh, innovation uh, and rapid technological development um, to create a, a different business model. Um, I'm interested, for example, that Rakuten, uh, which seems to me the sort of model of uh, a, a young innovative company, uh, is establishing business models specifically uh, to help small and medium-sized uh, companies, uh, often outside Tokyo and Osaka in the regions, uh, become more successful and competitive. Now this seems to be uh, a very encouraging uh, development. In some areas in Japan it's a little controversial. Uh, Rakuten has not made any secret of its um, impatience with traditional Japanese business organisations uh, and uh, I sense a, a certain um, tension sometimes in the way in which different elements of the Japanese business establishment uh, talk uh, to and about each other. Uh, but I think this is an area in which we are going to see uh, a lot of uh, dynamic innovation over the years to come.